On today's Mega News, the true villain of Mega Man X Dive is revealed along with another one of those three new antagonists. Prof 9 works his magic once again to bring us Mega Man Star Force 2, not quite DX. And Mega Man ZX3 joins the long, long list of cancelled Mega Man games from the end of the 2000s. Wait, what? All that and so, so much more is coming up on today's Mega News Roundup. Let's rock! Hey everybody, Shadowrock here with your Mega News Roundup for January 14th, 2022. Coming to you from the Shadowrock CX YouTube channel and the MegaManNetwork.com. This episode is the one we promised from last time that's going to cover the non-Mega Man X Dive news. From the end of 2021 to the beginning of this year. And although I did just say non-dive news, we do want to discuss the recent event featuring Draw Claire that was mentioned in the last video. Ah yes, the new female character that broke the Mega Man community. I do want to mention though, the Rockman X Dive social media pages recently had an interview with her character designer, which turned out to be none other than Ryuji Higurashi who's best known for Mega Man 11 and the Mega Man Battle Network series. There is a translation of this interview courtesy of Wendy Gitlord over on Rockman Corner if you'd like to check it out. But the main thing I want to highlight that the quote unquote orders for this character design were the words devilish, pale skin, loud eyes, tight makeup, and get this, an appearance that doesn't resemble Rockman. So for everybody on the internet that was saying, oh, Draw Claire doesn't look like a Mega Man character. Well, mission accomplished, I guess. Anyways, I mention it because that stage is now available to play for Rockman X Die players, Taiwan and Japan, as of the recording of this video. And boy, were there some juicy lore tidbits to be had in there. First of all, the second of the three new antagonist characters was revealed. A pink haired reploid that reminds you of Kid Icarus a bit. And his name is... Oh god dang it Dive. You really like your French names lately. And I am not even gonna pretend that I know how to pronounce that. So I'm just going to call him Ange. The nickname that the game gives him. Not a lot is known about Ange himself right now, but it does seem likely he will be joining as a hunter program before long just like Draw Claire. Just because it appears that he started to get along with the main cast just like Draw Claire did, that is before the third character comes into the picture, and I'm gonna call them Arato because that's their nickname. We haven't seen their design yet, but it appears to be a she, and out of the three, she also seems to be the boss. So Eruto comes in and she's gaslighting Ange and Draw, seemingly flipping a switch in order to get them back on her side. Sounds like a lovely person to deal with. And to make matters worse, it was also revealed that the three new antagonist characters are pretty much destined to be evil because from their birth, they were infected with a certain virus. Pretty much the same way that Zero was born. And so the mission they were born with is... Making deep log errors, I guess? I don't think they ever actually explain what the mission is supposed to be in the dialogue itself. Which is typical for this game, but I have to imagine it's either that, or trying to revive the schmuck inside their body. Does anyone want to take a wild guess? What the virus is? Who is it? Who's the main villain in Mega Man X Dive? Aw oh, come on, don't make me spell it out now. Alright, fine. It's Sigma! Oh my Boudicus? Now there's a shocker. Sigma is now the villain, the main villain, of not only Mega Man X, but the entire freaking franchise. Because while this game likes to pretend it's a Mega Man X game, 
The truth is, every single Mega Man series is a part of this game, and even a couple of Capcom franchises outside of Mega Man to boot. So in case Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, where Sigma combined forces of Ultron quite literally wasn't enough for you, the Ball Man has done it again. He has transcended into the metaverse to become the main villain of the entire franchise. Oh, I'm sorry, you thought Dr. Wily was the main antagonist of all the Mega Man series? Not anymore! Sigma came in like, yo, what's up? I have invaded all of your universes. Well, you know, two could play in that game because we have Mega Man with gun. But all jokes aside, there you go. That definitely explains why all the raid bosses so far have been different forms of Sigma, and we even have up to three different playable Sigmas already including Sigma from the time before he became a Maverick? Crazy. Now it makes me wonder if Dai will eventually come out with their own version of Sigma, since they already have the exclusive Dive Armor X, and Rathalos Armor X too if you want to count the Monster Hunter event. Speaking of, that event did have Rathalos Sigma, however that was a reskin of Wolf Sigma so I'm not really going to count it. But man, we all joked about it, how this game would be the one to bring back Sigma to life just in time for X9 to come out. And you know, we're one step closer to that now with this reveal. It looks like the pattern for future story events is going to go as follows. Rico and team try to recruit a member of the three antagonists we were talking about. But oh no, they have Sigma inside of them, so now you have to fight Sigma in order to actually save them, quote unquote, by making them a hunter program. And then the character gets so happy that they explode. And that sums up the Draw Claire event right there. What a story, huh? Overall though, to finish up this rant, it is a bit disappointing that we can't even have a proper boss fight with each of the three new characters. If it is necessary to transform them into Sigma at the end, at least make them a mid-boss so we can get a feel for what they can do in combat outside of the Hunter programs. Because right now it does feel a bit lazy that they're basically recycling the Sigma fights they already made for these characters. It just goes back to the argument that yeah, wish we kinda gotten to know these characters a little bit more before they became playable and making them a boss fight would have helped with that. On top of that, you can't even call this an event, because it was a one and done stage with no rewards besides the 50 medals that you get from completing it once, which is a very lame reward to get by event standards by the way. And that's it, no leaderboards or anything, it's just, yep, yeah, here's some story that honestly probably should have been part of the actual story mode instead of an event. It's definitely weird, because any new players coming in is going to miss out on all this story content, since they keep putting the story behind limited time events. But oh well, that's the pattern we're following now it seems. So expect Ange to become a playable character within the next two months at the rates we're going, complete with another Sigma boss fight. Okay, that rant went on for way too long. May have even been better to make that a separate video, but you know what? We're here to report the news, and that's exactly what happened. With the dive stuff out of the way then, let's move on to some other news. Yeah, finally, right? Let's begin with some good news for people in North America who pre-order Retro Bits Mega Man The Wily Wars Collector's Edition. After a couple of delays due to ships getting held up at the congested ports, Retrobit has announced that Mega Man The Wily Wars Collector's Edition has finally been delivered to them, and they have begun shipping out the orders to Limited Run Games and Castlemania Games, so if you pre-order from either of those two sites, your order should finally be fulfilled before too long. And I repeat, this only applies to people from North America, 
because folks from other regions such as Europe have already been getting their orders in, for quite a while now in fact. But it's great to hear that the Collector's Editions have finally reached this side of the pond, and that means I should be getting my copy soon, so you can look forward to an unboxing video and a gameplay livestream on this channel very soon. For those not in the know, this is technically the very first officially licensed from Capcom physical cartridge for the Sega Genesis using the original NTSC North American version of Mega Man The Wily Wars that was featured on the Sega Channel service back in the day, and more recently on the Sega Genesis Mini console. On top of running at 60Hz as God intended, this version features some additional optimizations that cleans up some of the slowdown that plagued the original, one of the highlights being the Yellow Devil boss fight. In addition to your cartridge for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive console, the Collector's Edition also features a double-sided cartridge sleeve, full-color instruction manual, certificate of authenticity, interchangeable lenticular cars to display your favorite Robot Master, a sticker book, double-sided poster, and collector's cards. We're all still waiting for a day that Mega Man The Wily Wars might make it to modern platforms, but in the meantime, it's pretty cool to see this game finally get a North American physical release after it famously didn't get one back in the day. For anyone who's been waiting since the 90s for this to happen, your time is almost here. If you are looking to pick up this collector's edition for yourself and you didn't pre-order, Retrobit mentions that they are shipping some units to local video game shops. Not GameStop, Best Buy, or any others like that, but independent retro video game stores. So if you have any of those in your area, it'd be a good idea to give them a call and see if they're going to stock it. I would recommend keeping an eye on limited run games and Castlevania games in the coming days to see if they put up any extra copies for sale as well. I will leave a link to their respective listings in the description below just in case. Here is another cool thing that happened over the last couple days. SNK has just shadow dropped the Neo Geo Pocket Color version of SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters Clash for Nintendo Switch. In case you couldn't tell from the title, it's a trading card game featuring characters from SNK and Capcom. Originally, this game was split between two versions for SNK and Capcom respectively, but thankfully the Nintendo Switch port brings both versions into the same package, complete with separate save files for both versions so you can trade and battle between the two. As you can imagine, the reason why we're mentioning this release on a Mega Man channel is because there is some Mega Man content to be had in here. There are cards here that are based on the Mega Man Classic series cast of characters, and even X and Zero. There was even a Japanese only expansion that added some cards from the Mega Man Legends series. But unfortunately, that expansion doesn't appear to be available in this port. Personally, I have never touched a Neo Geo Pocket Color in my life, and I never played the DS version of this game either, so I missed the boat on this one. However, I have heard good things about this game, and it does seem like a fun little thing to try out for $7.99 US dollars. SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters Clash is available now on the Nintendo Switch eShop if you're interested. Now we just need to get a Neo Geo Pocket Color port for Rockman Battle and Fighters on the Switch, right? While we're on the topic of card games though, how about a card action mobile game? Yep, it's a new year and we already have another card pack and tap it. This time it's titled Breath of Resistance. Whereas the previous card pack had a command mission theme, this pack throws it back to the mainline X-Series with its cards. We have some familiar faces from X4 such as Colonel and Storm Owl, Shining Firefly slash Izzy Glow from X5, Dark Mantis from X8, Elia with her X5 design no less, that's a rare sight these days, and Douglas making an appearance here as well. Along with the Death Rogmer ship from X1 which sees a revival of its own throughout a few of these cards. 
Now that's believing you can fly. All in all, it's another beautifully designed set of cards. Which one is your favorite out of this set? The one that caught my eye is the flagship Death Rugmer 2 card, with it rising out of the sand and taking off. That's awesome. The Kanzuki Resistance card, which features Colonel hanging out with the likes of Ada and Wesker, is quite the novelty too. Alright, you heard about card fighting, tapping cards, but you know what I like? Battle cards. That's right, it's time to pulse into the Rockman EXE zone and check out the best Mega Man Star Force game, Star Force 2, which has gotten a much needed upgrade. And this is the part of the video when everybody unsubscribes. But before you do, I like to explain myself by saying I just unironically like the gameplay of this game, and I find the PvP to be more fun than Star Force 3 was. Yeah, Star Force 2 does have Auto Tribe King, but if you just wait 3 turns, it's not a threat anymore. Whereas in Star Force 3, there's the obvious Sword and Parahax meta, which the no para ability does help with that, but there's still that one little thing that makes it a little too chaotic. The noise system, which made it so when your noise is at a high percentage, every single attack is going to land. No matter if you have invis or not. It's a cool mechanic for a single player game, but for PvP, oh boy. And that's why I always preferred the good old Auto Tribe King meta over that. At the end of the day though, both games are awesome, in my opinion. However, Star Force 2 was not perfect. Yes, there is the storyline which we love to meme on on this channel, but putting that aside, Star Force 2 had its fair share of big overworld maps, with twisting turns and paths that made you go, where the heck do I go? But maybe it wouldn't have been so bad if it weren't for the Boudicus Forsaken encounter rate. You take a few steps, virus battle. You walk up to talk to an NPC, virus battle. Mom calls you down for dinner, and you'll probably run into a virus battle before you make it to the kitchen too. And to finally drive the point home, here's how most of the episodes in our Mega Man Star Force 2 Let's Play started. I'm Shadowrock. I'm TGP. And I've been thinking. Damn. You know what? I will totally not <laughs> give him a, a, a response because apparently viruses want to get in my way. <laughs> Well, that's a problem. How the heck are we supposed to fix that? Thankfully, after much memeing and joking around with the guy, the Wizard of the Stars himself, Prof9, finally gave in and came to the rescue with the anticipated sequel to the Mega Man Star Force DX mod. Mega Man Star Force 2, not quite DX. Yes, there are no plans for a full-fledged Star Force 2 DX, but honestly, it doesn't need one anyways. Star Force 2 has quite a bit of content, and it is fun. Just that dang encounter rate, man. And that is what this mod seeks to fix. By reducing the encounter rates for all areas by 40 to 60%, to bring it more in line with Star Force 1 and 3. And since the encounter rate has been reduced, the search subcards now double the encounter rate while active. Additionally, similar to the Star Force 1 DX mod, if you combine the cloaker subcard with the search cards, that will increase the SP boss encounter rate regardless of element. Star Force 2 Not Quite DX also seeks to give you access to all of the content that the game has to offer without the need for real friends, because who needs those, additional hardware, or a time machine to access an event that ended during the 2000s. What that means specifically is the following changes. The requirements to open a few of the Trans Dimension 2 doors has been changed so that you can feasibly do it by yourself. The first requirement is now 800 link power instead of 1000. 800 link power is the max you can get with the Auto Brother and the two Event Brothers that we will discuss in just a minute. The second requirement has been changed from 50 PvP battles to just obtaining 500 battle cards total. 
and as of the latest version, that counts all of your folders as well. The third and last requirement change makes it so you no longer have to have six real brothers, but instead you must make a 1000 plus damage personal best combo. As you can see, all of these changes revolve around you not having to interact with other games. Whether that be for network battles or for making real life brother bands. After all, the Wi Fi service for DS is officially shut down, so unless you have a means to connect to the fan server with things like an action replay, you're out of luck. So these changes are very much welcome. Another downside of no longer having the Wi Fi service is you can no longer access a few events. That being the case, after you beat the main story, you can pay a visit to the wave stations in the Wilshire Hills shopping plaza in order to make brother bands with legendary Master Shin himself and the first Mega Man. These two will have the tribe from the other version, so now you can use the tribe team legitimately without connecting to other games or using those infamous wave command cards. As for the event battle cards, if you talk to Legendary Master Shin in Wilshire Hills Shopping Plaza, he can hand you the King Grandeur card after beating the main story, and the Lemu Event Battle card after beating the post game. Last but not least, after you beat the main story, you can start the Mega Man Battle Network crossover side quest. This is so players that aren't playing on an original DS or DS Lite can still access the quest without having a Game Boy Advance Mega Man Battle Network game in the GBA slot. Although you can still use the originally intended method if you want to unlock the quest before the credits roll. This side quest has you picking up diary entries from Lan Hikari himself, and these diary entries are a cool read because Lan explains what happens after the events of Mega Man Battle Network 6, including discussions of the Navi that his son Patch ended up with, Higsby's going worldwide, and even the revelation that Lan was the one that started the research that led to the Brother Band and Link power system in the Star Force series. Neat, huh? Yep, that's some Battle Network 7 material right there. Before we get too off topic though, obviously this is an awesome mod, and while it doesn't feature any new content technically, again, I do believe this is more than enough for Star Force 2. All it's really needed was those few tweaks to make it that much more playable than it was in the past. Making Star Force 2 a game that I can now highly recommend to other people to play with this mod. If for nothing else, then the memes and the gameplay of course. A quick pro tip for anyone playing for the first time. There is a Mr. Hertz that will take you to the end of the Bermuda Maze after you complete it for the first time. So don't be like me and TGP and think we have to go through it every single time even after the story part. No, that's not the case at all. And for anyone who wasn't aware, you're welcome. For using Star Force 2 Not Quite DX, you just need to have a rip of your Zerker Cross Saurian or Zerker Cross Ninja US region copy in order to apply the patch to. No, we are not going to tell you where to get the game. You are on your own for that one. Furthermore, since Star Force 2 Not Quite DX doesn't add any additional content or really changes that much, all of your previous save files from the base game, other mods that are out there for the games, and any codes should be compatible with this one. But seriously, thank you Prof9 for the awesome Christmas gift, and I'm sorry it took me so long to talk about this in a video. Not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but all we really need now is a Star Force 3 patch that makes it so you can access all the content without Wi-Fi needed. Integrating the noise poker card system from the Japanese version would be a nice bonus too. And then the trilogy will be complete. In the meantime, definitely check out the two Star Force DX and Not Quite DX mods already out and play those games. I promise they're good. Well folks, I'm afraid I saved the most depressing news in the video game department for last. Over the holiday break, Inti Crates hosted a Christmas livestream 
where they casually revealed that Mega Man ZX3 was a thing at one time. Wait, what? Yep. Around the 1 hour 13 minute mark, the cast of Inti Kurate's president, Takua Aizu, Yoshihisa Suda, and Tai Toshiaki started playing Mega Man 9 through Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, no less. So there's something to think about for anyone who still thinks Capcom and Inti hate each other. Although Capcom might have something to hate them for after this conversation they had around 30 seconds later. Via Rockman Corner, we have a translation of what they were talking about thanks to Sidier. And well, here we go. You made the player character, Mega Man, right, Mr. Suda? Yes. And it moves very smooth, no? It does. The best Mega Man. Well, you know, Mr. Suda made ZX3's player character, right? He was working on the ZX3 player character and then brought what he had to Mega Man 9's player character. It was in the middle of ZX3's development. And then Sid makes a note that they're not talking about the actual characters, they're talking about the technical mechanics behind the player characters. How they play, how they feel, how they move. But uh oh, Aizu just dropped quite the bomb there. How does Suda respond? I is it okay to talk about this topic? Is this a good idea? Well, if they're still under an NDA, then yeah, that would be the case. Aizu goes on, there is no such thing as a ZX3 game. Haha! <laughs> well, because the right name is ZXC! Oh dear. Yes, amazing. Amazing, yes. I am the drunkest! <laughs> yeah, that explains a lot. <laughs> Suda goes on to say, I'm certain the project's codename was ZXC. But that's it, isn't it? Mr. Ko, Young Yabe, Mr. Yabe wrote the setting materials. Yes, yes. Yes, indeed. Well, he was preparing things to make it right away. Sure, he came up with a lot of places for the game's world. No, I guess we shouldn't be talking about ZXC. It's obviously a bad idea, but, uh, well... I'll cut it up in the archive later. If the fans want to complain, talk to Capcom. Kidding. I mean, he's not wrong. You gotta tell Capcom you want the game, not Inti. And Aizu says, those involved in the decision, canceling ZX3 slash ZXC, have left Capcom by now anyway. Mr. Inafune isn't there anymore to begin with. And for the last little hilarious note, no, he didn't actually cut it from the stream. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> so let's break this all down. Sometime between when ZX Advent came out and Mega Man 9, so around 2008 maybe, Inti Kurates started work on Mega Man ZXC. Maybe ZX Covenant to go with the Advent theme? Yoshihisa Suda was working on the gameplay mechanics behind the player characters, although we don't know any details on what the player characters would be. Meanwhile, Mr. Yabe was drafting the setting materials. But soon after, presumably when it came out that Mega Man ZX Advent didn't sell very well at all, ZXC was unfortunately cancelled and Suda's work on ZXC would be transferred to Mega Man 9. And thus, that is the story of how Mega Man ZX3 became the next dream sequel on the list, next to Mega Man Star Force 4, which got cancelled because of Star Force 3 not selling well, and of course, everyone knows the story of Legends 3. What's next? X9 got cancelled too? Ugh. There's not much more that can be said about this. After all, this information was the result of a drunken slip of the tongue. So I do feel a little bad if they end up getting in trouble because of this, but hopefully not since this happened so long ago anyway. Still, it is pretty crazy to find out that they were technically working on ZX3. Granted, it sounds like development didn't get very far at all before it got kicked into the can. But man, after all these years, we finally find out. I want to end this off by touching on something that Aizu and Suda said at the end of their conversation. Because they got a point. There's no point in trying to attack Capcom today over this. 
However, what we can do as a community is show Capcom that we do want Mega Man ZX3. And thankfully, in this day and age, Capcom did give us an opportunity to vote to our wallets. I'm talking about, of course, the Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection. It's been a couple years now, but if Mega Man 11 is in the indication, Capcom is still counting those sales even today. And if they saw that people are still buying the games, hey, that's one way to say the people want ZX3. So that's my point. If you are saddened by this news like we all are, the least you can do is show your support by supporting the official release. Pro tip, if you pick up the Steam version of Zero ZX Legacy Collection, there's a lot of awesome mods that are available for it. From changing the soundtrack, undubbing the game, and so much more. If you are a big Zero ZX fan, if you haven't delved into the mods yet, it's well worth checking out. I'll even leave a link in the description below to the mod guide so you guys can take a look through it. At the end of the day, this cancellation happened a long, long time ago. It's in the past, so all we can really do now is look forward to the future. And indeed, the future may be bright if we get Rockman Tyson announced soon and whatever else they may be cooking at Capcom HQ. Here's hoping for the best. Phew, that was a lot of video game related news. We are almost done though, just have merchandise and manga to talk about. Since we're over the 30 minute mark though, I'm gonna make this as quick as I can so we can get out of here. First up, PCS Collectibles has revealed renders for their X and Zero statues. The theme of these statues is they are meant to depict the time when X and Zero were first being built. And you can see the two Maverick Hunters are standing inside of a capsule, and they are half naked so to speak with some of their insides showing. However, it gets pretty weird when you take a closer look and you realize that the insides of X and Zero look identical. Considering they were made by two entirely different people, that's a strange coincidence, isn't it? That said, this is just a render, a proof of concept if you will, so perhaps the final product will differentiate between the two more. There is no other information that's available right now for these one-fourth scale statues, but we shall update again when we find out. Before we get to manga now, here is a couple of reminders. The Nintendo Switch Split Pad Pro Mega Man Edition from Hori has been delayed from December in the past, but according to Amazon at least, it is coming out on January 21st, 2022. As long as it doesn't get delayed again, it won't be too much longer now until people who ordered it will have it in their hands. If you would like to get in on the Split Pad Pro, and you'd like to support this channel while you're at it, consider using our affiliate link in the description below while you're shopping. Lastly, here's a reminder that the second Armor X kit from Kotobukiya is already out. Technically, it came out last month in December for Japan, but the English version should be hitting US hobby stores this month in January. In addition, don't forget that stores such as Big Bad Toy Store and Hobby Link Japan are restocking a lot of the Kotobukiya X kits. So if you missed out on one of them in the past, it may be time to look again and see if you can snag one. Now, on to manga. First, some unfortunate news. The compilation book, Ryo Takamasaki Rockman Works SSR that we've covered in a few videos now, has been delayed to mid-February. So if you've already ordered this from Japan, keep that in mind if you're wondering where it is. In brighter news though, we have a host of new chapters from Rockman San and Rockman Chan. Catching up in release order, Rockman San Chapter 16 gives readers a look into the day and the life of Gyro Man, Burst Man, and Drill Man. Meanwhile, Rockman Chan Episode 16 Part 1 sees the beginning of Dr. Light's plan to develop the next generation of robots. But alongside that, we see some additional crazy combinations between Mega Man and the support robots. We add Super Rush Man in Chapter 2. Now, let me introduce you to Full Rock Man, Flying Rock Man, Patriot Rock Man, and that isn't even his final form. Nope, we have Perfect Rock Man. The perfect combination between Rock Man, Beat, Auto, 
Eddie, and Rush. A form so powerful that one shot can get Dr. Wily begging for mercy. That could be the fastest Mega Man game ever. Then in Rockman Chan Episode 16 Part 2, we are introduced to Dr. Light's next generation robots, which ironically they look very similar to X in the Reploid. And where there is X, Zero isn't far behind as Dr. Wily starts working on a robot using the best of Rockman, Auto, Roll, and Rush to create what could be Rockman Chan's version of Zero. Yeah, this manga is wild. <laughs> We somewhat get back to normalcy though with Rockman Son Chapter 17, which features the day in the life of the Mega Man killer Anchor. And yo, is that a Mega Man and Base flashback to King? Now there's the deep cuts. While they are all still in Japanese, if you want to check out any of these insane chapters, I will leave a link in the description below for them. But that's not all for our manga news, because now I want to take this opportunity to highlight some fan translations. Courtesy of the group Azure Wind Productions, we now have an English translation for The Men Who Made Rockman Part 2, which tells the famous story of how Mega Man 2 came to be. Spoilers, it almost didn't happen. If it weren't for that development team pushing through, we may have not had a Mega Man series, but it just ended at 1. Also coming from Azure Wind Productions is an English translation of Yoshihiro Iwamoto's Rockman X4 manga. Now this is awesome, I've always wanted to read Iwamoto's mangas, and now that we have an X4 fan translation, it might be time to start. And if that wasn't enough, Azure Wind Productions has mentioned that they intend on retranslating the Rockman X1, X2, and X3 volumes as well. What can I say, they're doing the Lord's work over here. And last but not least, Midori also continues to do the Lord's work with English translations for Rockman Son, which is now up to chapter 12. I'll leave a link in the description for the Rockman Corner articles for all these English translations. But seriously, give a round of applause to all the awesome fans that are doing the English translations, the mods for the video games, fan games, artwork, and so much more. These are the people that keep this community going with so much cool new stuff all the time, and we appreciate all of them. With that said, that does finally bring us to the end of this Mega News Roundup. As always, you can find this episode and future episodes here on the Shadowrock ZX channel and on the Mega Man Network. Visit themmnetwork.com for editorials, news, the videos of course, and lots more. And naturally, stay tuned to Shadowrock ZX for all things Mega Man. If you are enjoying the content, we would appreciate your subscription, likes, hitting the bell, and whatever else these YouTubers say these days. If you would like to do something more, we have a tip link in the description, and you may consider becoming a channel member for as little as a dollar a month. On that note, a big thank you to all of our channel members, including GA class supporters, LML123, Vince Crystals, Adrian Cauldron, Chaos Bunkai, Rico Syndrome, and Austin Buford. Your generous support really does help us keep the channel and the videos coming every single week. So we really do appreciate it. That's all from me though. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. I'll see you this weekend for the live streams and on Monday for the next Mega News Roundup. Until then, rock off.